We are now in chapter 11, section 2. We're going to be talking about how we measure simple harmonic motion. In this first part, we're just going to talk about the concepts. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify the amplitude of a vibration, and we're going to recognize the relationship between period and frequency. So we'll be defining each of those three words as well. So for measuring simple harmonic motion, okay, we've talked about two different models. We talked about the simple pendulum. Okay, and for that to be useful, we need to be able to describe the motion mathematically. So we take our acrobats that we mentioned before, we turn it into a simple pendulum, but now we gotta talk about like how we would measure what's going on in our pendulum. So there are three things that are usually measured in simple harmonic motion. They are amplitude, period, and frequency. And I'm gonna now define each one of those for you. So amplitude is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium point. Or we could say in simpler words, the furthest it will go before returning to center. So if we look at our picture right here, if this bob only swings this far where it's at, and then it would do the same on the other side, okay? The distance from the center to the farthest point that it reaches, that is the amplitude, okay? We use the capital letter A to represent amplitude, and we measure it in meters most of the time. Occasionally, you'll see it discussed in angles, but for this class, we'll primarily discuss meters or centimeters. The next thing is frequency. So frequency is the number of completed cycles or vibrations per unit time. Frequency will always answer the question of how many cycles happen in a given time. So what that means, okay, is again, we'll often use seconds, okay? So think about how many times it might oscillate or vibrate in one second. So it's asking how many times will this bob swing back and forth and back and forth in one second of time, okay? So it's asking how many. So the unit we end up with that is it's gonna be like the number of oscillations, right? The number in a given amount of time, which is usually one second. And this has a unit that we call the hertz, that we write hz. And one hertz is equal to one over a second. Or we can also write that as s to the negative one. But most of the time we will just say hertz, and you should know that it means these other two things. Now we're going to talk about period. Period is the time it takes to complete one cycle of motion. So now instead of seeing how many times our pendulum swings back and forth, we're going to look and ask how much time does it take to go back and forth just one time. Okay. So because this is a time that we are measuring, our unit is most commonly going to be the second also. Okay. So we'll ask ourselves, how long? Okay, so frequency is how much, and period is how long. And it looks like I made a mistake here. This should say period, and it was probably wrong on the previous slide, too. So make sure you identify that word. <laughs> Now, I just want to compare these two because people get this confused pretty easily, which one is which, okay? So when we talk about the word frequency in English, we use the word frequent in daily language, like maybe you frequent a certain coffee shop or a certain store that you like to go to. And so that just means you like to go there often, like a certain number of times. Okay, so frequency is always asks, answering the question, how many? Okay, you give a number answer, and it's always per second. So how many per second? Okay. Again, the unit is the hertz, which is 1 divided by the second, or s to the negative 1. Okay. And it's how many swings of a pendulum or anything else happen in one second. So we could just count them, right? And go 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a countable thing. Period. Period has to do with time. So we're asking the question, how long? Okay, and it's always the time for one cycle or one vibration. 
Okay, so the time it takes to go from here to here and back, we would say, how long does that take? We give our answer in units of seconds. And that will never change. That is our unit. So hopefully you guys can work on remembering that. And please make sure you understand the difference. If you do not understand the difference, you are going to really struggle in this in the next chapter. So if you don't understand, ask me. I want to help you understand. All right, that's the end of the concept portion for this section. So we just have the math to tackle, and I will see you guys later.